Professional football in America is a special game, a unique game. Played nowhere else on earth, it is a rare game. The men who play it make it so. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. Coming now, buddy. We on our horse all day long. Let's just kick that ball all day long. Pick it up. Don't stop. Pick it up. Let's go. Get at the ball. Catch on somebody. Welcome to This Week in Fantasy Football. I'm Mike Cardano, along with my sidekick, Scott Engel. Welcome to Week 4 of This Week in Fantasy Football. How are you doing this week, Scotty? Yeah, I don't understand this sidekick thing. I have about five times as much experience in this industry as you, yet I'm your sidekick. How does this work? We could switch places if you want. I don't, I don't think you could handle being You like the intro music? Oh, yeah. I want Balboa. I want Balboa. You hear me, old man? You tell him what I said. I'm coming after him. You know, we're doing well with these celebrity questions. Last week, we had uh, Neil Giraldo. Yeah. Right? Pat yeah. Benatar. And, I love and, We and Belong. What else do we have? Uh, Mar- Marv Levy. Yes, so Marv Levy. We've got a lot of questions this week. Let's let's go through the questions. We're going to start with questions We're going to start with, with questions first. Really? Okay. And okay. then we'll go. Then, then I want to find out how you did in your, you're doing in your expert leagues. And then, and then we'll go game by game. Okay. Okay. I All like right. the layout here. So we, we got first uh, appropriate with the music. Carl Weathers has a question for Scotty. What? Will you stop Carl this? Has- you got to stop teasing me every question week. You know I'm case. a huge Apollo Creed fan, a huge Rocky fan, okay? I actually wrote an article on rotoexperts.com last year about still grieving over the death of Apollo Creed, and I, I tweeted at Carl Weathers, and he enjoyed it. Stop teasing he me. He tweeted you back? That, that he tweeted me back. What did he say? A really, really great guy. I thought he was going to say, we held the greatest title in the world. But instead, he said uh, he really enjoyed the article and it made him wonder about the history of Apollo Creed. But don't tease me and say that Carl Weathers is asking. No, just answer his question. question. It's right, not Carl Weathers. Go. Come on. Now be nice. Don't like you it usually do. Can't be took. Carl. Carl don't Weathers has to be a fan. Don't be rude. Or be Let me tell down. you something. One of my all-time most favorite movie supporting actors. You always wanted to have a friend just answer his like question. Apollo Creed. Answer his you always wanted to have a friend like Apollo Creed. You know what? And it, that makes me think of one of my expert leagues from this week, right? I lost when Darren McFadden scored that late touchdown for the Raiders, one forty six point seventy to one forty six. Was that before or after they did rock paper scissors? Uh, after I, it was after, uh. but it was the McFadden touchdown. It was nothing right. to do with Denver. That was a Denver thing. I lost one forty six point seventy to one forty six point ten. You know what I said to my opponent? I quoted Apollo Creed. I said. You beat me by one second. One second. That's very hard for a man of my intelligence to handle. You gonna answer this question now? I'm just ex- excited. This Carl Weathers wants to know. Wow. Uh, he, what does he write here? He writes, uh, I took Peyton Manning with my first pick in the draft, and now the guy who has Adrian Peterson wants me to trade for him. They want to swap. Okay? Straight up. Is that something I want to do? I would have chosen AP over Peyton at the time if, if Peterson was still over, was still there. But now I'm not so sure. Keep up the good work from one king to another. How about that? Wow. Well, I, answer his question. I, I'm, I'm, kind, I'm kind of blown away. You know, so so yeah. Manning's got 90 fantasy points and, 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 and Peterson, I look at, he's got about 50. Well, so you, can't, you can't look at it at fantasy points. It's all relative That's to the, the point, the, isn't it? It's all relative to the position. No, it's not the point. It's not about over fantasy points. It's, point. it's point. a fantasy show. You're not, li- you're, not, you're not listening here, okay? You know, you get, you get your head around it, all right? You know, What's the matter with you? You know, like Apollo said to Rocky. But uh, you know, it's, it's not about the overall fantasy points because running back is uh, more scarce than quarterback. Now, to draft a quarterback in the first round is probably not something I would have recommended the, at the time, but depending on who your running backs are, it might have worked out. It might have worked out. You probably have a good record if you have Peyton Manning. I think it all depends on how you replace him at quarterback. I would actually consider this because to have Adrian Peterson with the state of running back right now, I think he's more valuable to a fantasy team actually than Peyton Manning is because if you have something like, say, Peyton Manning and maybe Eddie Lacy or Peyton Manning and Lamar Miller or uh, you know a guy who's not a top 10 running back but then you have 
I'd rather have something like Adrian Peterson and Russell Wilson or Adrian Peterson and Tony Romo. So I think the running back quarterback combination that you would probably have overall would be better if you had Adrian Peterson. So yes, plus I'll, you got the I first three four weeks trade. worth of stats out of Manning already. Well, Manning's gonna have a great run all the way. Well, he's, probably he three, a, he's probably three. He's probably three He might have an historic season. I mean, you know, Carl, Carl Weathers probably you know three and zero saying. I've been with the best, and I've beaten the best. I've retired more you know, men than Social Security. You know, Carl played for the, for the Raiders briefly. Yes, yes. But do you know who he played for in the in the CFL? He also played some CFL. I knew he played for the Raiders, but I didn't know who he he played for in the, in the CFL. That would be the BC Lions. The BC Lions. Which I think he played British Columbia. CFL. I'm not sure. We'll have to ask Matt. He played, about he that. played with in the CFL with, with with the wide field. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. And he right. recently had a sports comedy movie come out a few years ago that I liked. He doesn't strike me as a funny guy. What? Uh, he, he, he played he played. Oh, he, although he did get his arm bit off, didn't he, with the uh, Adam Sandler and the, uh, the by the alligator? Yes. Yeah. And he also he also uh, nearly beat Dolph Lundgren on a rematch on the on the on the Wii. I, oh. I saw that online. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. We have another celebrity wow. question for you uh, headbangers out there. Not headbangers, but. Um, so, so last week you, you 80s metal or, you or got 90s to metal heads. interview uh, Gene Simmons last week. Yes, right, and tremendous experience. He's going to sing the national anthem this week at the Steelers Vikings game. Yeah, I don't think singing is that. What are you talking about? Great metal. Yeah. But uh, so we have a question. What's the matter with you? From um, who do we have? Vito Brada from White Lions. Really? You like, like White Lion? Lion? I like White Lion, not White Lions. No, White Lion, singular. Yes, you said white lines. Did I, uh, I made plural. I mean, I lines. know who they are, okay? When the children cry. Great, you go. great power ballad right there. There you go. There okay, you go. and let me tell you something. The song Wait is like a perfect fantasy theme because you have to wait, okay? You can't be reactionary. You have to have patience in fantasy football. So like Vito Brown and White Lion said, wait. I, th- I think he's right in your backyard, Stanley. I think he lives in Staten Island. I said that. Oh, he's over there. That? Over there. All right. Over well, here. Could be over Vito here. wants to know. He says, Scott, absent injury, is there ever a time you sit your best player because of a poor matchup history? No. And I've, I've said this before, Vito, on, on the program and my articles on Rolex. He Express. was pra- busy com. practicing probably. And, uh, and uh, you know, well, you were listening. He probably was. Uh, on Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. Matchups are only used to govern decisions between players of similar value. We learned this last week when people were saying Alex Smith or Cam Newton because Alex Smith has a better matchup. You play your better player regardless of matchup. Perfect example, Marshawn Lynch always tears up the San Francisco 49ers. Everybody thinks it's, you know, it's, it's a tough matchup. You don't bench your superstar players with tough matchups. They become superstars by putting up the numbers against all types of competition. Fantasy football is not just about pure matchups and who you face. It's about the player as well, and foremost, actually. Okay, okay. All right, we've got Paul from Michigan who's got a question for you. I don't know All if he right. plays the guitar or whatever, but um, Paul wants to know... Detroit Rock City. What can you tell me about Mike Glennon? Should I pick him up? You know, I know a thing or two about Mike Glennon. This is he's gonna I s- turned you on to start him. to uh, this will, he'll start this week for the Bucks, right? Yes. Now he's never thrown a pass in the NFL, but this is going to be the second time he's replaced an NFL starter. How about that? What well, was the first time? He replaced Wes- Russell Wilson in college. Yes, in college, when, when Wilson bolted for Wisconsin. A, I don't think he's going to be a Russell Wilson, but. Do you ever go to RotoExperts.com? Do you read no. the site? No. It's obvious I write on it. I don't in read it. August, in the exclusive Edge package, my Super Duper Sleepers column. Now, last week I talked about Jason Snelling. He was one of my subjects. I mentioned Mike Glennon as a Super Duper Sleeper. Also, on a video that I did here on RotoExperts.com, this kid is poised, and he's got a strong arm. He's got some potential. If you need a backup quarterback, you know, maybe you, you, you know, you're sitting with somebody that... that you want to cut as your backup quarterback, you know, uh, take a shot on Mike Lennon. I, you know, I, I, would, I would rather have him than, say, uh, Alex Smith right now. Okay. All right, a couple more questions, and we'll get to these games. A lot uh, of people are about that. Kenny one. in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Tuscaloosa, how you doing, boy? After seeing how both running backs are being utilized at this point, would you trade LaShawn McCoy straight up for Adrian Peterson? It's been orphaned to me. I don't know if I could see it's two similarly ranked players at the same position. Uh, you don't make a major upgrade. You don't fill a need. I hate these kind of trades. Some people just trade for the sake of making a trade. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, will I get a minor upgrade by getting Peterson? 
I think it's always nice to have Adrian Peterson, but you don't need to do it if you have LaShawn McCoy. I'm going to say no just on principle. Okay. All right. There you go, Kenny. Have you get answered for you. Uh, Peter from Blue Point Middle School. I don't know if he's ah. a student or a teacher, but um, it says he's, okay. that's in Tampa. I guess it's Florida, right? Wants to yes, know Tampa if, is in Florida. If, Very good. Ex- expert insights yeah. here from Michael Cardano. Tampa is in Florida. Wants to know uh, if you're still down on Michael Vick. And then he, I think he takes a little dig at you. He said he's ranked second in fantasy points behind Manning and ahead of Rodgers. I was never down on Michael Vick. I think that's yeah, extreme. Yeah, little kids taking digs at I, I think that's kind of extreme. I was never down on him. I'm always a Michael Vick skeptic because of his history. And uh, this is a guy that has always been injury prone and has never played wire to wire over a full season of his career consistently at a high level. You take it with Michael Vick week to week total fantasy points don't mean a whole lot to me after three weeks but you know right now michael vick is top seven fantasy quarterback okay okay all right let's get right to the games here we got uh, baltimore at uh buffalo uh what do we got there oh i love tory smith this week against that secondary uh really? you know, the big game from this week's score his first touchdown game tory smith is playing so well right now People would uh, people were pigeonholing him as, as a fly pattern, post pattern type of guy. You know, he's shown that he can run all types of routes. It looks like Ray Rice is probably going to play, which means you should use him. Uh, in one of my expert leagues, I'm actually having to use EJ Manuel uh, for Cam Newton uh, in a Roto Bowl league, uh, and I think he should give me decent numbers. Stevie Johnson, you start him every week, Marv Levy. You know this guy, how reliable this guy is. Keep the faith in CJ Spiller. But uh, I wouldn't expect an outstanding performance. Okay. Uh, Cincinnati at Cleveland. Interesting here. You saw the Cleveland offense blow up last week under Brian Hoyer. Hart. Hoyer. I think everybody missed Hoyer. that. Game. Hoyer showed a lot of poise in the pocket, made good decisions, yeah. was very accurate. But this is a much tougher defense that he faces this week. Uh, I don't think Josh Gordon blows up. I don't think Jordan Cameron blows up. But you have to start them. Willis McGay, he said he expects to uh, contribute a lot more this week. I don't see that. Uh, on the Cincinnati side, I don't care who A.J. Green faces Joe Hayden. A.J. Green does it against everybody. They're trying to get Muhammad Sanu more involved in the offense. Keep a watch for that. And Giovanni Bernard can do anything anytime he touches the ball, but he's going to continue to get limited touches. Well, I like Sanu. I like Sanu. I really do. Uh, Bears at the Lions. Bears at the Lions. Reggie Bush Good practicing point. in full. Looks like he's going to play. Maybe he's still considered Joy Bell as a flex. Uh, you know, I think you'll see a lot of Reggie Bush maybe in the slot. Over A lot of people talk about Ryan Broyles, but they've had to bring him along slowly. I wouldn't use him just yet if you picked him up. On the, Bear, on the Bears' side of the ball, Matt Forte is playing as well as any running back in the NFL right now. He's actually scoring near the goal line, even though they're still using some of Michael Bush. Uh, this is a good week where if you're without Aaron Rodgers and you're without Cam Newton, where well, you can plug in Jay Cutler. Okay, okay. Giants at the Chiefs. Is the Giants going to stop turning the ball over? Is Manning going to stop turning it that over? That happened this week in Kansas City. Tom Coughlin can give all the motivational speeches he wants. This is not a team that they match up well against. They won't be able to run the ball against a, a very, very good uh, Chiefs defense that is uh, being led up front by Datari Poe. It's just playing terrific, terrific football. Uh, you know, the Giants... You know, maybe Eli Manning throws two touchdown passes, but they're still going to lose by a lot of points this week. Against that Giants secondary, Dwayne Bowe is going to rebound and score this week. Mark it down. Okay, Pittsburgh at Minnesota. In London. Minnesota's certainly inconsistent. Yes. London, in London. Yeah, I, I don't, the stadiums always sound so hollow and stuff when they play. I don't like it. They do. It's a World League of American football yeah. vibe. And the, the, the uh, Vikings defense... Uh, belongs in the world. They're hollow as well. Football. Yeah. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, good start. If you got Rodgers or Cam Newton on a bye, love Antonio Brown. Maybe use Emmanuel Sanders if you're missing one of the pack of wide receivers on a bye. Le'Veon Bell gets his first NFL start, but I'd be cautious with using him because he's just coming back from the foot injury. Uh, you know, on the other side of the ball, you know, the Steelers' defense not quite what it used to be. But not, you know, Greg Jennings is not even useful right now. Maybe not even rosterable. So are you expecting a big day from all day? Uh, Well, I don't think anybody can stop Adrian Peterson. You just plug and go with him. Okay. Uh, Arizona at Tampa. Arizona at Tampa. Yeah, Tampa's really... uh, 
Mike Glennon gets a start. Yeah. Uh, I think they'll be conservative. I think you'll see a lot of Doug Martin maybe catching passes out of the backfield. The big thing is is that both the uh, starting wide receivers for Tampa Bay are injured. You're going to have to see if they practice on Friday or not, but that could be a real well, Glennon used to throw them to the backups, right? Yeah, but uh, if you don't have Vincent Jackson and Mike Williams out there, it's very, very tough. Uh, on the Arizona side of the ball, Rashard Mendenhall dealing with the toe. The good news is Larry Fitzgerald is practicing in full. I know he faces Daryl Revis, but when Larry Fitzgerald practices in full, you got to start him no matter who he faces. Okay. Uh, Indy at Jacksonville. Now, Colts shocked everybody last week. Um, I don't play terrific. I don't really know what to week. make of them. I, I I don't think they're that good, but um, I guess you didn't watch the game then. They I weren't did. that good the other weeks, and uh, you know I don't know how much to attribute for um, uh, the 49ers' failures or or, or that. they he, were good. He, he they were good. The they were good. The games. I mean, this team is very very balanced. Trent Richardson going to give you more face into the offense. They have a very deep wide receiving crew uh, out there. I think T.Y. Hilton gets back on track. Uh, Darius Hayward Bay becoming more part of the offense. You know, another bye week consideration. Andrew Luck's playing solid football. And this defense is playing better than anybody gives it credit for, including yourself. Uh, I think Maurice Jones Drew can be run on. They can be run on. We did, we, well, San Francisco they, they was running on the ball. They, they, they was running the ball on, on them. But, they just stopped. But but as far as passing the ball, though, nobody was getting open. Everybody was blanking and covered. You know, they, this is a respectable enough defense. You know, they're facing Jacksonville. Blaine Gabbert's back in there. Yeah. Um, Seattle at Houston. Very interesting game. And you read my C- preview on Seahawks.com this week about this game. You look at the Houston Texans. They're giving up 27.3 uh, points per game and you're saying well the defense is not looking that good but then you realize like last week Matt Schaub had an interception return for a touchdown there was a punt return term for a touchdown the offense is sputtering Matt Schaub has four interceptions the defense is actually second behind Seattle's in overall defense and passing yards allowed so this defense is playing better overall than people give it credit for but Marshawn Lynch shows up in big matchups he's the one guy you depend on Russell Wilson Decent, but not outstanding day. Don't use any of the Seattle wide receivers. You can't bet Jerry and Foster, but you can't expect a whole lot. Andre Johnson, they're leaning towards playing him. He's going to be a game-time decision, but I would blame you if you bench him. I mean, he's got a he's got a shin injury, plus he's facing Richard Sherman, and I don't like DeAndre Hopkins either. Really? Yeah, not against his Seattle secondary. Interesting. Okay. It's the best secondary in football. Um, Jets at uh, Tennessee. Jets of Tennessee. Jets played good defense last week. You know, that front seven is underrated. Oh, they, they had an offensive breakout. Are you kidding me? Well, they had I two get, receivers over 100 yards. That hasn't happened in They did. Buffalo years. secondary is very bad. They took advantage. But the defense, the front seven, is the key. They're going to yeah. stifle Chris Johnson this week. You're not going to see any Jake Locker like heroics. The San Diego defense, which was so bad, made him look like John Elway last week. On the other side of the ball, Santonio Holmes isn't quite 100% when you watch him on film. He's really struggling to get up to full speed at the end of his routes. I pick him up, but I don't quite start him. I think you can use Bilal Powell as a flex this week. You know, he, he's going to be the guy this week because Chris Ivory's out. Yeah, and but they get Mike Goodson back next week. So Okay. Um, well, now, let me ask you a question about the, about the Jets receivers there. What, what I knew do you, he was going to go extra. What do you make Jets about there? Stephen Hill? Now, let, let, me, let me say I have some opinions on Stephen Hill. Now, he looks like Calvin Johnson. He's about the same size and weight, roughly. Went to the same school as Calvin Johnson. He runs like Calvin Johnson. I hope he just can't catch the ball. He just can't catch the ball. So, what are his prospects? He's a young kid. You know, he's in his early 20s. He's very, very raw. Isn't that a prerequisite of being a receiver, though? you got to catch the ball. I know he had 100 yards, but the ball hit him. Yeah, but he's very, very young. He's very, very raw. You know, as a dynasty league prospect, I like him a lot. You know, give this kid some time to develop. You know, uh, the Jets are a rebuilding team. Uh, You know, they're going to take this... Their time with him, you know, let him go through the bumps. In a few years, he's going to be a very, very good. NFL but people shouldn't get faked out receiver. because he had 100 yards last week. No, I mean this might happen on occasion, but you know, like I said, you know, this kid is a work in progress. But you know, the Jets are smart because they're giving him the reps out on the field where he can learn the game as he it's goes. Not like to have anybody else to put in. Yes, you know, but you know, that's an advantage for him, yeah. both as a Jet and a fantasy yeah. player. Okay, uh, Eagles at uh, at Denver. It's not well, looking too good for Philly. Terrible defense against uh, 
against Peyton Manning. I mean, you start all your key Broncos here, even though Sean Moreno, even though there's a uh, committee, go, true committee going on on there in the backfield. People will say it's a committee when there's two running backs. You can't have a two-person committee. This is a true committee. Uh, you know, you got to love all your Broncos. Michael Vick, uh, you know, he's going to get harassed and hit a lot. And Denver has enough defense, quality defensive backs to maybe double-team Sean Jackson. But Vic, even in a tough matchup like this, he's still going to get his numbers, uh, you know, because LaShawn McCoy is going to take a lot of pressure off. Well, him. that's the thing about quarterbacks. Quarterbacks, that their team can get crushed, but they can still have good way. There's, there's catch up time. There's, there's catch up time. And with but someone also, like him too, he can get flushed out of the pocket and he can run he can for run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that I like about Chip Kelly. He's let Mike, letting Michael Vick be Michael Vick, freelance, run, be Michael Vick, and you know this. This helps his fantasy appeal. Okay. Uh, Dallas at San Diego. I tell you, you know, I'm very tempted to love Tony Romo this week, but uh, there are a lot of wide receiver injuries there. You know, Dwayne Harris was one of my sleepers of the week, but he's dealing with a hip pointer. I don't know if Terrence Williams can do something even against that bad San Diego defense. I think it's going to be a great week for Des Bryant and, uh, and Jason Witten. Uh, you know, maybe they throw to some of the backup tight ends there, but I still like Tony Romo for at least two touchdown passes. DeMarco Murray, I think, is a terrific weak catch and passes out of the backfield. That's Dallas defense. That guy going to have another 175 yards on the ground. Well, uh, I think he's going to have a very good game. He, you could know, end up, he, he could end up with that many yards from scrimmage. Romo week. surprised me last week. I thought his ribs were banged up. and, and Romo's tough. Everybody was talking about the Rams' defensive line. And I thought they Romo's were going to be banging them all game. Romo's but tough. This team apart. can walk in and really drub San Diego in, in, in its home building. You know, Ryan Matthews is mediocre. Danny Woodhead serviceable. Eddie Royal, maybe you'll get the touchdown, maybe you won't. It's a roll of the dice. I, I love the Cowboys in this game. Uh, Redskins at the Raiders. Don't see a whole lot of defense in this game. Terrell Pryor has been cleared to practice. You have to like him. If he plays, you got to like Denarius Moore. Rod Streeter can be a bye week plug in. I think you see a lot of Alfred Morris, and he has a very good game this week. The Redskins will find more offensive balance. This could be a close and high scoring game. Which of the two. Uh Running quarterbacks has the most rushing yards this week. Uh, I would say Pryor probably does because he's a much better runner than he is a thrower. Okay. All right. Patriots. Robert Griffin, much better pure passer. Patriots at the Falcons. Uh, I think it should be a good game. This should be interesting to see. You know, Rob Gronkowski might play. Uh, you know, Julian Edelman probably going to get a lot of targets. I think you see more Brandon Bolden this week. Uh, Belichick's going to give him his chance because it seems like Stephen Ridley's in the doghouse. On the Atlanta side, uh, if I have to pick one of those two running backs, it's Jason Snelling again. Better chance of a touchdown always than Jacquez Rogers, but both of them are good flex plays. Uh, Julio Jones, obvious, must start. They need to get Tony Gonzalez involved. It'll be a pivotal week for Tony Gonzalez owners. Okay, all right. Uh, Monday night, Dolphins. At the Saints. Big one. Undefeated teams. But I just don't... I think it's when the Dolphins get their butts handed to them. Uh, you know, I think they'll be out of their league. Uh, you know, I don't think they're quite as good as their record. They're a respectable team now, which is a step forward for them. But uh, New Orleans is playing some very, very good defense under Rob Ryan. Uh, I don't see Lamar Miller doing much. I think Ryan Tannehill gets rattled. Maybe the only Dolphin I'd start with confidence is Mike Wallace because he's going to be like Monday night under the lights. You know, I want the ball. On the other side of the ball, they need to get Darren Sproles more involved. Uh, Kenny Stills is boomer bust. You know, he does get the targets. If you're desperate, you can play Kenny Stills. You know, Marcus Colston, always a shot at the touchdown. Drew Brees, he's Drew Brees. He's going to spread the ball around. Why do they need to get Sproles around. more involved? They're 3-0. Oh. I, I think ideally they don't want to have to over-involve Sproles. You know, I've heard this about the Saints, that they'd rather, you know, give it more to their wide receivers and then have Sproles maybe more. Sproles more of that outlet guy. They don't want to overwork him as much as they have in the past seasons. They've used him more out of need than right, what right. they wanted to do schematically. Right. So, uh, speaking of the Saints, did you see the ESPN special about Archie and, and, and the whole family, all the, the three no, Manning right. boys? It's fantastic. I re recommend it highly. I don't, the other I don't night. have time to watch that. You know, no, you're studying game site, film. You know, yeah, studying yeah. game film, stuff like that. You know, watching watching Rocky three for the forty. How are you doing in the expert leagues? Uh, I'm doing I'm doing pretty good overall. You know, uh, two and one in the Roto Experts in house league. The only one that's frustrating me is the Sirius XM host league. Who, who, I, I have a very good team with Peyton Manning, and I've lost two games just by that much. Who beat you in the Roto Experts league? Uh, who beat me in the, the Roto Experts in-house league? Uh, I, 
What's, what's was it, it Lou? I beat, I beat Adam Ronis. Lou's not in the league. There's no player? I, I, oh, I can't remember who I lost to, actually. I really don't pay pay attention to my opponents, actually. That's disrespectful. Yeah. Just like just like when, before, when they do play me, I go, I want you. <laughs> All right, well, we're not going to disrespect you. We'll be back here each and every weekend. So for week four, I'm Mike Cardano. This is Scott Engel, the King Scott Engel. We'll see you next week. The master of disaster, the king of stage, Mike Cardano. Now's the time to work and strain at a sport that tests the spirit and challenges the brain. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. Yeah, I'd like to have 75 degrees of sunny all the time too, but that's not football. Do you fear the force of the wind, the slash of the rain? We're gonna play a suit light and rain! Go face them and fight them. Be savage again.